la 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 This is our second check. Check, check. This is very exciting. Are we checked? Check, check. Are we checked and ready? Are we tan rested and ready? Very well. We realize that there are a lot of bands that actually have talent and have practiced more than once in the last eight years that you've come to see. So we'll try to make this airy persiflage at the beginning of the set mercifully brief. But brothers and sisters, friends of the revolution, I bring you a testimonial. Why are we here? What is the reason for the season? Paul number two, let them all go. Come on. 
in the early bits of that set. I kept feeling something rattling around in my prosthetic hair. This isn't my real hair. No, this isn't my real junk either, don't worry about it. I had a harmonica between my hair and my head, which is bouncing around, stabbing me in the head. I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. That's not, that's not part of the act. That's just goddamn truth. Anyway, we're pleased to be here. I know I should not have eaten tacos, or even ate taco. The taco is rising about to the 25% level. When the taco gets up to the 90% level, we have a problem with the possible projectile vomiting. There isn't above the Tijuana level. Well, we're getting to that point. We're getting to that point. Tell us where the projectiles going up the other end if you know what I mean. But you know Paul number one. But you know Rick Six. But you know Paul number two. As much as me vomiting on the audience might be a bit distasteful, it's nowhere near as distasteful as Dorothy Candy! Strap, I don't know, it's not a joke. It does kind of make me want to sing Tony Orlando and Dawn songs using my body as a percussion instrument. Like, you know. Means she'll beat me in the hallway, twice on the pipes, means the answer. Okay, never mind. Not enough ambient Tony Orlando and Dawn fans up here. Yes, Tom, Bob, Tom. The, the real problem with the cod piece it makes me think of Jeff O'Tell. Whatever you said, I agree with it. Got it your fucking birthday! <laughs> and 
And that might not be democracy as we know it. Poll number one, you still got some of those personalized picks or you wanted them. A veritable Rick Nielsen he is. A veritable Rick Nielsen. But you don't have... I notice you have a beer in your hand, that's why I'm not struggling this one. I notice that you don't have your face lovingly engraved onto the pick. It's a song that will... I'll give you a hint, Paul. It's the way it is. I'm not 
need that cool down time and can't wait for the beginning of songs. Goodness gracious. I don't know what else to say. I'm proud of my bulge. That bulge is looking all right. I'm proud of my stripes. I said someone about being a leopard spotted slut. Well, now I'm wearing zebra stripes. Which just kind of close to show you that I, I can really take whatever side is, you know, whatever way the wind's blowing. Oh, what do we have? Requests, requests from upper management? Upper management. Time bomb requests quenching fluids. I shall give him quenching fluids. Oh, I'm sorry, I take away from Paul number two's trick. Apparently Paul number two's AT&T homemade t-shirt was in the wash, so he's concocted a completely new one. Nursing home. It doesn't quite ring as cryptically off the tongue as his former slogan, Gay Bar. But we do what we can with the bigger gifts God afforded us. Anyway, Rick. We can't deliver miracles. We only had one practice in the last eight years. Rick, I've got a comedy joke for you. It's a joke, Rick. Yeah, what's that? It's very funny. Good, good. What did Ron Santos say to Pete Rose? Uh, not a number 10 like me. Well, you're, you're, four, you're four correct, you're four correct. What Ron Santos said to Pete Rose was, Pete, Charlie Hustle, I want to get to third base with you. Well, that, that makes sense, that makes sense.
thank you for Dice King fans. The last time Boris played a reunion show, which is the only the ever time, oh, ever, only ever, ever only. Okay, fuck the story anyway, it wasn't going anywhere. The bottom line is that every time I sing, I'm biting my right cheek. Don't laugh, I might be biting your right cheek later. So you eat my girlfriend. If not, then what are you doing going woo at all the in your window for? Alright, never mind that. Here's a song that's completely innuendo free. This is some of what we had when we didn't have Pierre to cater in tacos to the band backstage. Back in the benighted days of the Port Plaza Mall, the late 90s, the early 2000s. Probably post the gold mine, I don't know. I don't really have a list in real life, I'm just putting my fucking cheek every time I talk. Well, whatever, that aforementioned song from Gay tells me that, God dang it, Paul, I don't really want to walk the Taco Bell with us. Thank you, Taco Bell. 
Bell, two six seven six loyalists. I like Taco Bell even before they invented the Diablo sauce. I'm hardcore. Nowadays, of course, we don't live in such times. I'm old. I don't feel like I'm walking all the way downtown to go eat Mexican food. Me and my girlfriend like to walk to Taqueria, Michigan. Although I can't pronounce it properly. And last night, somebody sent out a mind of Rich Taylor and tried to inform us what the Mexican restaurant menu said. That was very strange. He said, I know you're not from around here. No, I'm not from around here. Yeah, I've only lived in Green Bay all my fucking life. I'm clearly not from around here. I thought he was one that, I thought he wanted to take the seat for his own, you know? He can clearly tell you were from New Jersey. I think that's the problem. I think that's what we are transplanted. Don't have, we don't have Mexican restaurants in New Jersey. Rick Six lives in the same state as Glenn Danzig these days. And adrenaline will deep. And you know what? Once I heard, once I was doing something particularly nasty in my bedroom, and I heard Twist to Cane by Danzig on the radio while I was in the middle of the act. And uh, I thought there was sort of a message there. There was a subliminal thing kind of going on. And that's when I realized call number one. That's when I realized call number two. That's when I realized whatever your name is. And my radio was telling me to kill, open parentheses, the guys on my radio, close parentheses. I'm not the 
gentlemen, and Kellyanne Conway fans here. So anyway, this next song requires a hastily, hastily improvised prop. Hastily improvised prop. It's about contact with alien life forms, but do not, it does not include Kellyanne Conway as such. I hope. Anyway, as you might be able to tell by this sign, of which I am proudly displaying, the song is called UFO. Generally, the song sounds with me showing you the sign, and you chanting UFO, UFO. However, necessity is the mother of invention, and times are different tonight. Coach Time Bob Town, 50th birthday party! Therefore, for the nuts, one time only, we're gonna change UFO, UFO, to Big 5-0, Big 5-0. It has nothing to do with Jack Lord either.
us to a very special part of our evening's performance. I know many of you have been looking at Paul number one, monitoring his every wardrobe change, trying to figure out exactly what set of socks Paul number one should wear for his most festive of occasions. You all voted for the wrong. You can't even see his fucking socks. What the hell do people even vote for? Might as well show him your socks, Paul. Those are the wrong ones. He should have had the striped ones. Anyway, so the pink and the green ones won if you run to the internet poll. I voted for the blue and the black striped ones, but I get all voted. I got all voted in November, too. The stripes are my favorite. Very well. Now, if you'll notice, when you're looking at Paul trying to figure out exactly, you know, his wardrobe choices, you know, exemplary they are, you'll notice that Paul has a new button on his guitar strap. Paul, would you like to say what that button says for the audience at home? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll read it for you. It says, despite age and infirmity, I eventually gave Boris my panties. You may recall, back in the 1990s, Boris the Sprinkler had a terribly successful advertising campaign where we printed up 100 little purple buttons that said, I gave Boris my panties. These buttons could not be bought at any price. You have to actually give Paul your panties and be female. Or at least close enough, at least identify as female. We don't want to fuck anybody up here. We took them, we said, what did you do with the panties? Did you wash them? No. We thumbtacked them to our practice room door. All 95 pairs of the panties, for we kept one for each other. And we also had one bra, which didn't really count, but I was, never mind that. Never mind how we got the bra. They stayed on the practice room door for all of the 90s, well, until they bulldozed the building. Then we had buttons printed up that said, I eventually gave Boris my panties. Those yielded more panties. All those panties since 2003, when the band broke up, have been sitting in my shed in a crappy guitar case, duct taped together, infested by vermin, stoking up moisture from the ground, getting spider's eggs in them and everything else. So just because I no longer have room in my shed to store the bountiful harvest of Boris's panty bank, we decided that we are going to redistribute the wealth to you to make some room for the panties that we're going to get with those new buttons. So, he had it, my heart is, we're giving back to the people. We're giving back to the people. 95 pairs of panties free of charge. Some of them only 19 or 20 years old. Some of them only with minimal spiders, eggs, and mold. If you find one of these in between two pieces of toasted bread, don't believe it when somebody asks you, fan, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you want a grilled cheese?
words in my brain.
Separated in the parking lot in a brawl with the late great Fritz from Man on the Walk. So when we finally got the two combatants, who were all about the size of all of us put together, we finally got those guys separated. We had Fritz in the parking lot, we had Tom upstairs. Those of us down in the parking lot attempting to quell order and make sure there weren't any other uprisings, were treated to the mind-blowing sight of Tom punching through windows in our apartment with his bare hands, yelling to anybody that would listen, I am the nature boy, I stand alone. Tom, Tom, can you confirm that you are the nature boy and you stand alone? Whoa, wait, that's a big titty fuck one. Woo! Well, Tom, Bob, Tom, come on out, Tom, Bob, Tom. Let me tell you, I've got somebody that might just have a little bit of a little an issue with that. Ladies and gentlemen, bring them on out. 16-time world champion, Ric Flair. Nature Boy Ric Flair. You'll notice Nature Boy Ric Flair is wearing an autographed Nature Boy robe autographed by the 16-time world champion himself. Time on top, clearly he is wearing the robe that proclaims him the Nature Boy. As you know in your career of never napping, weasel slapping, jet plane flying, and limousine ride, to be the man, you gotta beat the man. And I know you don't want to touch it with 16 time world champion Rick Flair. We decided in order to become the Nature Boy, we'd just like you to sing one song with us, that song being Yeah, Yeah by the Revillas. What do you say? Make some fucking noise! All right, Time Bob Tom, there you go, the words are yeah, do what you can, all right, boys, hit it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
sounds of celebration to God be on our way.